Remember, there are many ways to acquire knowledge, but not all can be shared in a way that provides similar levels of certainty based on the same evidence that's justified and generally agreed upon. The scientific method is one particular knowledge acquisition system that seems to provide answers that satisfy all of these components. Let's start with some definitions. The scientific method defined a method of testing theories and hypotheses by applying certain rules of analysis to the observation and interpretation of reality under strictly delineated circumstances. Scientific knowledge is knowledge that's explicit, systematic, and controlled. The scientific method has a variety of hallmarks, empiricism, intersubjectivity, explanation, and determinism. Empiricism requires that every knowledge claim be based upon systematic observation. Now, there are some assumptions with that. For example, our senses, what we can actually see, touch, hear, etc., give us the most accurate and reliable information about what is happening around us. Obtaining information systematically through our senses helps us to guard against bias. Intersubjectivity is the basis that it's the understanding that empiricism is no guarantee of objectivity. It's safer to work on the assumption that complete objectivity is impossible. Intersubjectivity provides the essential safeguard against bias by requiring that our knowledge claims be transmissible. The steps that we follow to arrive at our conclusions must be spelled out in sufficient detail that other researchers can repeat our research and that it's replicable. So if that research does in fact repeat our research, she'll come up with the same results. Transmissibility and repl replicability enable others to evaluate our research and to determine whether our value commitments and preconceptions had affected our conclusions. The third hallmark is explanation. The goal of the scientific method is explanation. A political phenomenon is explained by showing how it's related to something else. For example, if we wanted to explain why some regimes are less stable than others, we might relate the variation that we observe in the political instability to the variation we might observe in economic circumstances. The higher the rate of inflation, the greater the political instability. Another example, say we wanted to explain why some citizens are more involved in politics than others, we might relate the variation in political involvement to the variation in citizens' material circumstances. The more affluent citizens are, the more politically involved they will be. Now, empirical research involves searching for a recurring pattern in the way that phenomena are related to one another. The aim is to generalize beyond a particular act or time or place and to see the particular as an example of something more general. Finally, the last hallmark of the scientific method is determinism. Now, determinism is only an assumption. It cannot be proved. But the search for these recurring regularities necessarily entails the assumption of determinism, i.e. the assumption that there are, in fact, recurring regularities in political behavior. The assumption of determinism is valid to the extent that the research proceeding from this assumption produces knowledge claims that withstand rigorous empirical testing. In a sense, what we're saying is the scientific method is simply a more sophisticated version of the way we go about making sense of the world around us. Except, in everyday life, we often observe things accurately, but users of the scientific method will make systematic observations and establish the criteria for the relevance of those observations in advance. We sometimes jump to conclusions on the basis of a handful of observations in everyday life, but users of the scientific method will avoid overgeneralizing by committing themselves in advance to collecting a certain number of observations. Once we've reached a conclusion, we tend to overlook contradictory evidence, but users of the scientific method avoid such selective observation by testing for plausible alternative interpretations. And when confronted with contradictory evidence, we tend to explain it away by making some additional assumptions but so do users of the scientific method. However, they make further observations in order to test the revised explanation. Knowledge claims based on the scientific method are never regarded as true or proven. No matter how many times they have been tested, they are never true. To be considered scientific, a knowledge claim must be tested. And if it's testable, 
it must always be considered potentially falsifiable. Scientific knowledge, for that reason, is inherently skeptical. We can never test all the possible empirical implications of our knowledge claims. It's always possible that one day another researcher will turn up disconfirming evidence. So, why is the scientific knowledge acquisition system so special? Well, scientific knowledge is a special knowledge acquisition system as it uses a common language. All researchers using the scientific approach should be able to understand the general approach of another researcher. Other methods of knowledge are not less valid, but certainly not as easy to communicate to others in a uniform and consistent manner. So remember, our scientific method is a method of testing theories and hypotheses by applying certain rules of analysis to the observation and interpretation of reality under strictly delineated circumstances. The scientific method is explicit in that it has rules defining reality. It's systematic, meaning the people draw links between pieces of evidence and controlled the evidence linked by observation and collected with a strategy with explicitly stated parameters. The scientific method, of course, is inherently skeptical. Is the scientific method useful for researchers of government and politics? You bet it is. It provides the evidence for our theories. It's also useful for prediction. Systematically examining observed behavior allows us to make predictions about society in the future, but only with those obser observations from the future will we be able to evaluate how good we've done. With this basic foundation in the scientific method, our next segment is going to take us to conceptualization, operationalization, and theory building. We'll see how the scientific method plays an important role in testing our theories. Science.